Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on sets in Java. So a set is a kind of collection that stores only unique elements and we'll see how that works in a minute. But I'm going to start here by declaring a variable of the set interface type and I'm going to make my sets here store strings. Um, although they could store anything and in fact in the next tutorial we're going to look at how to use your own custom objects as um, elements in a set or as um, keys in a map but in this tutorial I'm just going to show you um, basically how to work with sets using strings or integers or whatever and uh, I'm going to show you kind of basic set operations like um, intersection and iterating through a set um, and that sort of thing so um, I'll create a set here that stores strings um, and I'll call this variable set1 and I'm going to set that equal to a new hash set um, which stores of course strings. Now um, I can add elements to my set here by saying set1.add and let's just add some animals so I'll, I'll add dog there for start and I'll copy that and let's have a few more here. So let's try dog, cat, mouse, um, snake, bear. And I can output that set very easily by just doing a sysout on the set variable itself because the two string method of sets is rather nice. And if I run that, it's going to show me what's in my sets, what's in my set. Now, um, if I were to add the same um, item again, so like um, if I say um, adding duplicate items, I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com so you can prove it at your leisure. Adding um, duplicate items does nothing, basically. So if I do set one dot add, um, let's add mouse again. And if I run this, Unlike with a list, um, sets only contain unique items. So this setting add will basically have no effect, which is quite handy. Um, and sets are really good for situations where you just want to sort out the duplicates from some whole bunch of things. Now hash set, um, as you may have noticed here, doesn't remember any kind of order. So let's put a comment here, hash set does not retain order and hash sets can and will spontaneously rearrange themselves according to no particular um, logic so um, if you want your items to be ordered in a set don't use a hash set and certainly don't rely on them being in the same order every time in a hash set if you want to um, order your items then you can use a different kind of set let's say here uh, linked hash set remembers the order you added items in and I'm going to change this to a linked hash set and let's comment this one out and uh, with a linked hash set um, a linked hash set is like a hash set except that it has a doubly linked list running through your items so it will keep them in the right order so I've added them dog cat mouse snake bear and here we've got dog, cat, mouse, snake, bear. And you can see that um, adding the mouse again hasn't caused any rearrangement. It just ignored it because mouse is already in there. And finally, if you want your sets sorted in natural order, you can use tree set. So tree set sorts in natural order. And natural order, uh, we're going to explore a bit more in a future tutorial, but um, for um, uh, for strings, natural order is going to be alphabetical order, and for um, integers, it's going to be sort of one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And for for you know doubles, um, of course, it's going to sort them numerically. So if I call this, if I use a tree set here, um, and I run this, we're going to get bear, cat, dog, mouse, snake. This is alphabetical order now. It's tree set sorts in alphabetical order um, for strings. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at some um, common kind of operations that you want to do with sets. 
So um, probably the most common thing to do is iterate through the set. So uh, let's have a comment here, iteration. And you can iterate through a set most easily using a for each loop. So if I say for, um, and I declare a variable of the type of thing that's in my set, and I put a colon there, and then just put the variable that points to the set, then that's going to set element to each element in turn in my set. So if I output this, I'm going to get all the elements in my set. And of course, if it's a hash set, it could be in any order, a tree set, of course, we're going to get an alphabetical order. And a linked hash set is going to be the order that I added them in. So pretty straightforward. Um, and often you want to know if a set has a particular item in it. So um, does set contain contain a given item and sets are kind of optimized for that kind of thing so you can say unlike with a um, with a, a list if you want to find a particular item in a list you're going to have to look through all the items in it but sets are optimized for finding particular items quickly so I can say if set one dot contains let's say um, odd fork which I know it doesn't then let's have a sys out here sys out contains odd odd fork odd fork let's try to spell odd fork correctly not that it matters at all odd fork I think that's correct um, and let's have another one here let's say if set contains cat which it does contains cat so if I run that it's not going to say contains aardvark but it's going to say contains cat so contains just checks if the item's in there or not um, and uh, if you want to check if a set is empty you can use the um, is empty method so I could say here if if uh, set one dot is empty then um, let's say sys out set is empty and let's do that again after I've added items so um, it's going to say um, here um, set one uh, is empty or it should do where are we set is empty but um, set is empty at start set is empty after adding that actually won't happen so if I run that, um, of course it's empty, empty to start with, but after I've added items, it's no longer empty. Um, now there's a bunch of other useful methods and you can check those out um, for yourself if you just go to Google and type something like Java 7 or whatever, set, um, and look at the set interface and look at the methods that it lists. So we've got stuff like add all and clear to get rid of all the items from a set, contains, contains all, to see if it contains all the elements um, in a particular collection. Um, it has remove, so you can remove elements, which I won't show you um, in this tutorial because it's going to get a bit confusing because I want to show you a couple of other slightly more complex methods. Is empty to array to turn your set to an array. And the two methods that I want to demonstrate to you now are remove all and retain all because they allow you to perform the kind of mathematical operations of intersection and difference or complement. Um, so let's have a look firstly at intersection, intersection. Now I'm going to create a new set here called set2. So let's, um, let's just copy all this stuff and I'm going to paste it in down here. So here and control shift f to format my code there and i'm going to change this to set to i'll get rid of that is empty thing and set to here and i'm gonna to set two i'm going to add a couple of elements that are in set one let's have dog and cat nice and simple and let's add have some elements that aren't in set one let's have have giraffe um uh monkey and ant. So set two contains dog and cat which are in set one and it contains stuff that's not in set one. 
And if I want to find out which elements are common to both sets, um, the first step is um, you probably want to create a copy of one of your sets um, because otherwise um, you're going to end up messing up the two sets you have. So I'll do this, I'll do like set um, set containing string strings and I'll call it intersection intersection equals new um, let's just use a hash set, that's simplest. In fact, um, maybe I'll use a linked hash set because it might be a little bit clearer. Or will it? No, you know what, I'll stick with, I'll stick with hash set. Hash set is the most um, uh, kind of lightweight type of set you can use. So usually you use hash set unless there's a particular reason to use tree set or linked hash set. That's going to contain strings. And um, I'm going to pass to the constructor here uh, my set one. So I'm going to say here set one. Um, and what that's going to do is it's, it's going to make intersection a copy of set one. So if I do sys out here on set one, let's maximize the editor. And I run that. Um, so um, set uh, my set here. So set one is bear, cat, dog, mouse, snake. And I've just made a copy of it called intersection. Oh, sorry, I've, in, I've output set one by mistake, so that demonstrates nothing. So I'm creating a copy of set one and I'm outputting that set. So I run that. Um, and so set one is bear, cat, dog, mouse, snake. And my copy called intersection is bear, snake, mouse, cat, dog, uh, which is actually the same. So bear, snake, mouse, cat, dog. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to find out which elements are in this that are only in um, set two. And to do that, um, I can say intersection intersection dot retain all, and then pass it um, my set two. So intersection at this point is a copy of set one because I pass set one to the constructor. And then I say intersection retain all set two. And that's gonna keep only the elements in intersection that are not only in um, intersection to start with, which is set one, but are also in set two. So what I've done here is I've computed the intersection of set one and set two. I found the elements that are only in both of these sets. So let's put um, the sys out down here and run that. And you can see I've just got cat dog because those are the elements that are common to set one and set two. Um, and in fact, I'm going to move this comment down here because I want to show you something else here. So I'm going to say here um, set set two contains some common elements with set one and some new, some new elements. So that was intersection. And the other thing you might want to do is find the difference of two sets. So um, let's put a comment here, difference. Supposing I um, create a new set here, which is a copy of set one, again, set one, um, call this difference. Now, supposing I want to find um, the elements which are in set one, which are not in set two, what I can do is I can say difference dot remove all set two. So difference is going to start off being a copy of set one, and then I'm going to remove all the elements that are in set two, and I'm going to be left with just the unique elements in set one that are not in set two. And let's put uh, let's do a sys out here. Um, and sys out on difference. And if I run that, we can see that in set one, um, I've got bear, snake, and mouse, and those elements are not in set two. And of course, you could do it the other way around. You could say, find the elements that are in set two that are not in set one. And if I do that, it's going to be what? Giraffe, monkey, and ant. So if I run that, and it says giraffe, ant, monkey. So let's, that's it for this tutorial on uh, sets and as I say, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at using your own objects 
in um, either sets or as the keys in maps. And to do that, we're going to implement hash code and equals method. So we're going to look at some little problems that could arise. So join me again next time. This code will be on caveofprogramming.com, which is all one word. And until next time, happy coding.